Hey guys, Sean B here and today we are playing around with a new free 5 star that you can get from the event It's gonna be Ken from the event <laughs> Alright, so I put Devilmon into him and luckily I got the skill 3 max but I really want to max his skill The event give you I think 5 skill ups so I think you still need Devilmon to max his entire skill set which I think is really worth it because there are many things around here I also 6 star him immediately so with all these effort hey can you subscribe to the channel really appreciate it thank you so much he also come with a free rune set that's actually not bad but the rune i'm using on him i changed a couple different runes because he didn't have max crit rate when you use the free rune set and he need max crit rate to get instant turn with skill number three so I changed some runes, but if you're using his crit rate leader skill, then you don't have to change anything. He awakened into accuracy, which is really awesome for a unit that has a lot of debuff. So let's take a look at the skill set. Skill 3, Shinryuken. Can leave a branding effect, do damage according to debuff, and instantly get a turn if all attacks land as a critical hit. So max crit rate will give you instant turn all the time which is cool. Also, branding plus damage according to debuff scream PvE to me. His skill too is Tatsumaki Senpu Kiyaku <laughs> That is such a long name. Attack enemy three times. Each attack has a 30% chance to remove one beneficial effect and absorb attack bar by 10%. So this is really good for dragons, whether B10 or B12, because you can strip the immunity and then absorb the attack of the boss and the tower, which is really, really good. When you max a skill, you'll get an extra 20% harmful effect rate bonus. I've been using him for the past hour in Dragon's B12 myself, and I would say it's actually pretty consistent. And if you get the skill up, he's gonna be so good at stripping the boss in Dragon's and also lower cooldown. Default attack brings attack break debuff. And when you max skill, it's gonna be 75% chance, which is really consistent for skill number one. So I think he's a very strong PvE unit. Not exactly the greatest thing for PvP, because he'll need attack buff and defense break set up for doing good damage. But for a unit that can get instant turn after using the skill number three into some sort of AoE, I think he's gonna be good in a Galleon set up to one shot, let's say, Tyrannus, and then when Tyrannus come back, he can do some sort of AoE damage to push back the enemy attack bar, which is not too shabby, or maybe kill the Odin, or kill a Perna, and then when you know the unit come back, you can still do more damage to it. He's not the worst in PvP, but I think he's more of a PvE unit. This is the free rune that I give attack in. I think it's a very good rune. This is my rune, but the free rune has 11% crit rate, so I need a rune with higher crit rate. This one is my rune, but the free rune didn't have speed, but it has, I think, similar crit rate. So not much major upgrade. This one has a lot of crit rate and accuracy. The free rune had accuracy, but no crit rate. This one has higher attack than the free rune, but the free rune, I think, give you speed. But the free rune had less crit rate. And this one has a lot of crit rate. This is a blue rune. The free rune didn't have crit rate. So overall, I only try to improve his crit rate, but not much crazy improvement compared to the free rune set. I have artifact for skill 3 crit damage, skill 2 accuracy. The recovery is just there because, you know, I can't take it away. It's really, really good for some other unit maybe. And this one, trying to get additional damage, you know, according to your attack or to certain element that you use him against, is going to be really good. I'm also using the Chun-Li that I show in the Chun-Li video, you can check that out. So this is gonna be a Street Fighter team. The concept of the team is very similar to those teams that exist out there with the Water Homunculus. I think he's gonna be a very solid replacement to the Water Homunculus because when you use the Homunculus, you wanna run the dot base, you know, skill tree. You don't wanna run some sort of single target strip in skill number one. So I think 
If you don't want to do that, you can put him in. He's like a Tyrone as well with attack power reduction. With Chun-Li slow debuff, Spectra slow debuff, and his attack power reduction. Also, branding for more damage for Chun-Li and Spectra. I think he's a solid addition to Dragon's B12. I try out Kali and Rogue in place of Spectra, but because both my Street Fighter don't have max skill just yet, so their consistency with the debuff is not the most amazing thing. So with Spectra in here, the control on the tower is really, really solid. You have two stripper for the boss, one being Lauren, the other one being um, Ken. So the boss will die very easily, even with the tower moving and giving the immunity. There are two units to strip. See right there, you strip. You can also push the attack bar of the tower back, which is really, really cool. So I think if you get him, and you can put some skill up investment into him. It's going to be a very solid Dragon's B12 unit. One change that may even improve the team consistency even further is the homunculus with the strip and skill number one in place of Spectra and team up skill to give attack power buff for both the Street Fighter to do even more damage. The damage coming out from Ken, I wouldn't say is very spectacular. His skill one and skill two do very mediocre damage skill number three do good damage but without attack buff it's really hard for him to just go crazy on the boss and dragon's b12 in nature is a very very tanky boss so you can't expect to just do some insane damage like how you use the twin or crow in the past on dragon's b10 so the runtime of this team is not crazy fast i think so far i would say the average is around a minute and 40 seconds but there are many, many factor in here that allow you to have a safe run with two stripper, three AOE control, attack break debuff in case the boss get a turn and hit you. But if you have attack break on the boss, it's not going to do much. And the AOE attack break from Spectra will allow you to do the mid boss safely without touching the side crystal. And also Spectra is a unit that doesn't rely on attack buff to do good damage. But the branding coming out from Ken will allow Spectra to do at least 10,000 more damage on the boss with skill number 2. So overall, I think it's a very solid team. The branding can help um, Chun-Li to do even more damage as well. So everything about this team makes the run safe. Not fast, but really safe. So if you get a good run where AI is not stupid and they use their skill number 3, then the run time can go down to a minute and 30 seconds. All right, let's try out the female Monkulas with the skill one I can strip and team up. I mean, rock on in skill number three. I don't have max skill in skill one, which means the chance to strip buff is not the most amazing thing. That's why I don't really like to use her with the triple rogue team because it's just not consistent and my rogue skill up is not there, which means the defense break is not going to be consistent as well. But I think with this kind of setup where you have a lot of AOE control for the tower is gonna be possible. So there are three strippers right now in the team, which means if the boss, even if the boss get the immunity, I think we're gonna be just fine. And with team up coming out from the homunculus, as well as the attack buff, our damage output will be good. But right here in this particular stage, when you don't have Spectra, it's gonna be a little bit risky because anyone here can derp multiple times in a row and use their skill one and not kill the Zyros immediately. The thing about using twin in the past is you cannot really derp with twins. And even if you derp, you still do a very good amount of damage. But all these units right here rely on their skill to do good damage. So if you run this team, I recommend you to kill the crystal first in the mid boss instead of going straight for the Zyros, okay? Because sometimes they can derp and that really, really sucks. So right here, we don't have team up from the homunculus, which means our damage output will not be amazing. So let's wait for the team up to happen. Not happening at all. Okay, slowly buff come out from Chun-Li. When I have all the unit here, max skill, I think it's going to be very consistent in every single department, whether it be damage output or control. But right now, all department are kind of lacking just a little bit. Okay, here comes the immunity test. Can we take it out? Lauren Derp. Okay, homunculus got it covered. So when you max skill, the monkula is going to be much more consistent. So I think it's not going to be a problem. 
After you strip, there's attack bar decrease from both Chun Li and Lauren, together with attack debuff coming out from Ken. So I think overall it's gonna be a very, very safe team. So this team right here, a lot of precaution. Let's give our Ken a quick run at Necro B10, I mean B12 as well. Man, every time I say these dungeon names, I always go back to B12 or B10. It's really, really confusing. But I think the Dark Vampire is going to be so amazing in Giants and Necro with the buff because now he's not simply an attack buffer, but he can go straight back into his skill 2 or potentially skill 1 to do damage as well. So that in itself gives the skill 3 less cooldown, which means the attack buff will be very consistent in your dungeon run. So that's really, really cool. So he used the buff right here, but because he reduced the cooldown himself, he might violent proc in the next turn to get it back for you. Okay, so here come Ken. I hope to see some branding damage going on here. Can we get that? Come on, weaken. All right, break the shield easily. Ken, damn, he's on rage, so he's not going to proc violent in here. But I would say he's not too bad in this dungeon. Oh, that's some that's some very good damage right there. And he does have multi-hit for the boss. But the default attack is not a multi-hit, so it's not that amazing. Good thing when the boss steals your can, he doesn't have your runes. So he can't just, you know, go crazy on your unit with the damage and the crits. Alright. I mean, it's not too bad, but honestly, in Necro B10, the moment you slap double rogue in, anything is gonna work. <laughs> Steel Fortress will be another dungeon where I think Ken's gonna be amazing. He'll be like a crow with, you know, debuff scaling damage, but he can actually strip as well and also put attack break on the boss. Now attack break is gonna be very good for the boss because it reduces not only the damage output of the boss, but also the amount of Thunderbolt that the boss can do to you when you take five turns. So without attack break on the boss, it will do three thunderbolt hitting random target so when you have attack break it will do two thunderbolt to hit random target less thunderbolt less damage output less chance to stun you so overall i think he's a very very solid unit for steel fortress everything he does benefit the dungeon so you know branding um, attack bar reduction strip in skill number two in case you fail to strip the boss defense buff or whatever. So overall, I think his entire kit also benefits Steel Fortress and not just Dragon's B12. So if you want to use him here, hey, I think he's also a very good option. And right now, until November, he's going to be a free-to-play unit. After that, I think he's going to be put in the Ancient Coin Shop, just like the Dark Vampire Lord. You are you're going to get it for free in the event period, but you will also be able to get it after the event period if you can buy it from the Ancient Coin Shop. And look at him right now, I think he's gonna be a good buy for Dragons and for Steel Fortress if you want to. He's not gonna be that good in the Punisher Crypt because I think he bring attack bar reduction, which means he's gonna boost the boss to give it free turn. He does okay damage though, but I think if you have to compare him in Steel Fortress and him in the, the other dungeon, Punisher Crypt, I think he's going to be much better here because overall, you still don't want to give the boss over there a free turn. And he doesn't bring slow debuff or defense break, which are the more necessary debuff in the other dungeon. But he brings attack break for this dungeon. So I think he's more fitted to be in Steel Fortress. Okay, good damage right there. Wait, why didn't we get instant turn? Did we miss a crit? There's no way. I have max crit. I think with skill 2 that do AoE damage, skill 3 that do damage according to debuff and branding effect, he's gonna be super amazing in any Rift Beast that is not water. Because it's a fire unit, so that is his limitation. So I think it's gonna be awesome. Even in the fire one with the small minion, his AoE can take care of the minion easily. So this guy is going to be very applicable to your PvE needs with the... I think attack break is not going to be too important, but you know, extra debuff for, let's say, your Crow to do more damage. And his branding thing, his extra turn to do more damage immediately. Everything about him scream PvE. And even in Rift Beast, I think it's going to be amazing. So I'm very happy that Comptas are giving out a free unit that can just help so many, so many player in PvE. It's a bit disappointing to see only one unit in this family 
I hope we will be able to see more like water and other elements. But maybe he's just gonna be like the vampire lord. There's only one of his kind in the entire family, and we'll never see more of him. But right now, I'm very happy with this guy. Just good damage overall, being free to play. Just solid, dude. It's gonna be very good in all the reef that you wanna use. You can put him in with Crow too, but you know, you don't have to. Outside of PvE, I think he's just a simple, good old fire damage dealer that can do some sort of debuff. But if you wanna use him in PvP, hey, I shouldn't be the one to stop you, right? You have defense break. Oh, we didn't get a defense break on the enemy. But fuck it, we're gonna go Shinryu Ken on this. Oh my god, look at that, look at that. Oh, baby. And we get instant turn to go and finish him, maybe? Okay. I think, I think he can do an okay job in PvP. But definitely not something high level. Definitely something more for fun. Or maybe if you look, you're looking for a fire damage dealer in a lower level. Then, I think he will do the job with good damage, good debuff. I like a damage dealer that is not just about damage. Actually, Jean is... No, Jean can stun and get turn cycling, which is a passive. So, yeah. I like damage dealer that can bring some extra utility to the table and not just pure damage. And this guy fit the bill, pretty much. I think, I think he can do a very good job at being a generic fire damage dealer, but he's not like a hard counter to anything, in my opinion. Before I end the video, I need to listen to the voice acting of this thing. Let's go. Sal on playing Summer with Sal on, okay? And I wanna hear some good stuff. Let's go. We're gonna go all in with a Sal effect, so prepare your ears. Let's go. Shinryuken! <laughs> Love it, dude. Love it. Okay, um, let's see. It's a big, it's a big. <laughs> ah, these are just so good, dude. These are just so, so good. Okay. The... Wait, I have this blue bar thing all this time? Last one. Haruken! <laughs> ah, so good. So good. Man, I wish every character has this kind of sound effect. That's gonna be so good. Uh, Hadouken! Alright, let's destroy this retash with... Good shit. Good shit. Alright guys, that's my Ken first impression showcase. Love this unit. Free to play stuff. Amazing. His toe looks kind of weird. I really like the original look of all these units as well. So hopefully we can change his form later on. But for now, we'll be looking at his, you know, six pack abs and funny looking toes. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, smash a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.